Welcome to Life Esteem, a program committed to delivering information that's important to you and your community. Welcome to Life Esteem. Always glad to have you uh, view this program. And uh, today we have a very special guest, uh, Chris Handles Franklin, <laughs> Harlem Globetrotter. Chris and I have a unique, uh, you know, kind of relationship because you beat me out for the team, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you come down between you and I. A little one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> one -on -one time. <laughs> the crossover was a little this tough. One was. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, man. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Honor and, to be uh, on the show. Absolutely. You know, I grew up wanting to, everybody, wanting to be a Harlem Globetrotter, man. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And you are a Harlem Globetrotter. Fantastic, fantastic. How long have you been with the Globetrotters? 13 years now. 13? Yeah. Um, and wow. Ironically, what I wanted to do since I was six years old, and uh, blessed to be living my dream. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? Boy, oh boy. How that happened? Mm -hmm. oh you know, uh, you uh, were the um, speaker, the guest speaker at the Nativity School a mm -hmm. few years back, and you told a little bit of your story about mm -hmm. just that. How mm -hmm. at six years old you knew, but you had a little rocky road there. Yes. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, w when I first tried to become a Harlem Globetrotter, I sent them a tape, and right. it didn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that door shut. Uh, because then I became known as one of the best dribblers of all handlers in the world and they mm -hmm. came looking for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I always tell kids to never give up, number mm -hmm. one, and uh, mm -hmm. continue to work hard and, and when opportunities arise, mm -hmm. you got to seize the moment. Absolutely. Seize the moment. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know your story who may be watching this program right now, but you begin to make commercials and things like that. Talk about that for a minute. Before um, yeah, my, mm -hmm. I, I, well first I was in the world's uh, best dribbler contest. Yeah. Uh, um, as a replacement, I ended up winning the entire competition. Wow. Perfect score, all tens. Nike said they wanted to do commercials, mm -hmm. and the rest was history. Our first commercial, uh, Freestyle, was rated um, one of Nike's uh, top commercials of all time. It won 13 awards, mm -hmm. and is currently in the African American History Museum forever. You so, did? Um, wow. The commercial um, actually changed my life overnight. Mm -hmm. That's when they came looking for you, right? <laughs> yeah. I actually, well, I went on this uh, film uh -huh. close to five Nike commercials, including LeBron James' very first commercial yeah. with um, uh, comedic uh, actor and um, great comedian Bernie Mac and yeah. a lot of NBA, NBA legends like mm -hmm. Jerry West, Dr. J, Moses Malone, and George Gervin. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a, that was an iconic commercial in yeah, itself. Man. Um, yeah. Then eventually, um, after having an amazing career with Nike mm -hmm. and uh, traveling the world with them, the Globetrotters came looking for me. Mm -hmm. and got a chance to live my dream. It's Man, been something 13 else. years. It doesn't seem possible. Time just flies, doesn't <laughs> it? It's, it's, it's it's it just flies. Yeah, really. And you're a local, local gentleman. You graduated from? Susquehanna Township High School. Go, yeah. go Indians. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. So, you know, now you have a, a camp that you've been running here in the Harrisburg area for a number mm -hmm. of years now. Tell us about your upcoming camp. Yeah, well, I have a basketball camp called the Ultimate Spin Camp. It's from mm -hmm. August 5th to the 8th. And, mm -hmm. that, and that camp is... Uh, it's near and dear to my heart because not only do we teach kids uh, about basketball, but also when they're not uh, playing basketball, they have to go to classrooms and they, mm -hmm. they learn things like self-esteem, um, uh, how to get along with uh, each other, teamwork, uh, um, and, and, and key points of life that help make them well-rounded individuals. Mm -hmm. And this is our 17th year doing the, the camp. 17? Yeah, yeah, so it's amazing to watch the kids come from the camp and, and, and watch them start to go to college and, and do some amazing things in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were doing the camp then before you became a home gold driver? Yeah, um, okay. I came back after my uh, Nike commercials and, uh, mm -hmm. and wanted to do something to um, kind of get back to the kids here here in this area. Yeah. And that was um, okay. one of my one of the first things I've done. Such a well-run camp too, by the way. I've had Thank a chance you. to you know mm -hmm. participate uh, at least once or twice early on back in right. the day. Mm -hmm. And I know my son has worked with you. Uh, yes, Nate yeah. has worked with you. Yeah, yeah. He's back Several in the area, years. so he may want to. You know, volunteer some time again. He hey, knows it was the best. Great to have him back. Yeah, man. So good mm -hmm. stuff. And so, you know, the young people learn a lot about, like you said, not just basketball, because mm -hmm. basketball taught us a lot about life, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and I think uh, there are a lot of aspects in basketball mm -hmm. um, that can help teach you life. Um, yeah. and, and, and for me, basketball was a, a unique outlet for me. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of those things that that help. Um, me become a well-rounded individual, I try to pour those same situations in, into the youth of our area. Yeah, yeah. And talk about, we had a brief conversation before the show started, about the responsibility you have as a Harlem Globetrotter, that there's certain behaviors or ways to present yourself that is really key mm -hmm. to yeah. maintaining 
Yeah. Well, you know, um, as a Harlem Globetrotter, we pride ourselves in not only being great basketball players, mm -hmm. but great role models for kids. Yes. And it's important that you conduct yourself as that type of individual mm -hmm. on and off the court. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, I think a lot of us within the organization live with passion and um, are passionate about what we do and the impact that we have on this world. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is why I started my uh, foundation, which is um, uh, Chris Handel's Franklin Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm able to do a lot of things in the community that I am, mm -hmm. and I think all of that starts mm -hmm. with that passion and that obligation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you've also paved the way for others to come behind, because I know at least one local young lady had been with the Globe Trotters for a few years, and uh, we just recently saw her on To Tell the Truth, you know, yeah, the national yeah, yeah. program <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, so, she's done mm -hmm. some amazing things, and actually, she started in my basketball camp. So, okay. did she? Okay. Yeah, so uh, it, it was great to. Um, me not only being a player but also assistant coach a scout and different things within the organization i was able to help um, provide that opportunity to um, not only her but a, a couple yeah. of uh, mm -hmm. other people in the area sure. uh, give them uh, mm -hmm. shots and opportunities and i think life is about helping others and, and being able to mm -hmm. open open doors and that's and right. uh, mm -hmm. I'm honored to be able to do it for such amazing individuals. The one young man, uh, Majors, it was yes. it Brian Majors? Yes. That is with the Generals, I believe. Is that right? Yes. was with the Generals. I'm not sure if he still is. But, yeah, yeah. you opened that door, too, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 again, uh, another amazing individual mm -hmm. who, who's uh, successful in all kinds of all walks of life. Mm -hmm. He, he uh, helps train me and, and has an amazing clothing line, okay. major prep. Um, but he, he's uh, been amazing with the generals organization great mm -hmm. basketball mm -hmm. player and and uh it's, it's always been great uh working with him also and people are not familiar with the harlem globetrotters they always play the generals is that correct yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's so that's the other team that those <laughs> <laughs> have they ever beaten you guys i mean Actually, ever? 1971 they oh did they they, they uh they won and uh, listening to curly neal and uh metal art tell the story was it was pretty funny, but uh, yeah. 1971 was their last win. <laughs> the last win? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Truly one of, you know, again, for per persons who don't know right. the Harlem Globetrotters, give us a little bit of the history and why it was so important that this institution continues to exist, the Harlem Globetrotters. Well, I mean, I think that uh, well, the organization uh, is instrumental in um, not only basketball history, but African-American history. Yes. You know, and um, back when uh, we started in 1926, mm -hmm. um, and so back then they didn't know uh, uh, African Americans weren't allowed in the NBA mm -hmm. uh, but in 1948 and 1949 they played the champions the Minneapolis Lakers mm -hmm. they beat them in 48 mm -hmm. they beat them again in 49 mm -hmm. and after that it helped integrate the NBA and the first mm -hmm. African American to sign NBA contract Nat Sweetwater Clifton was yeah. a Harlem Globetrotter oh, yeah. um, okay. so but uh you know, uh, the Harlem Globetrotters introduced, introduced basketball all over the globe in 1950, mm -hmm. and now it's this worldwide sport. Worldwide. But prior to the Globetrotters, it was, it was never in all of these places. Mm -hmm. um, the Globetrotters have been to 123 countries around the globe. Mm -hmm. I myself have been to 84 countries. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's an amazing history. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, it's, it's what I'll, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do. So it's, mm -hmm. it's great to live in your passion mm -hmm. uh, and, and to be able to spread that passion all over the world. How about that? Amen. You know, another thing that uh, shocked me once when I found out that Wilt Chamberlain at one time was a Harlem Globetrotter. Okay. Yes, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, was on a, mm -hmm. um, and and I think, as well as the Harlem Globetrotters, and, and, and with myself, basketball mm -hmm. has been used as a vehicle to um, to travel the world and, and to touch lives in a positive way. And he was on the team that actually went to uh, uh, Russia during the Cold War oh, and, okay. and help ex extend the hand of diplomacy. And, and we continue to do that to this day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is right. Curly Neal still with us? I mean, is he still alive? Or did he yeah, a great he mentor of mine. I talk to Curly almost every day. Uh, he lives in uh, Houston, Houston, Texas, wow. and uh, mm -hmm. still part of our organization. A lot of those older players are. Come on, it's man. Oh, man. It's, I, I mean, I grew up with Curly Neal, Metal Lark Lemon. Come on now. Yeah, no, I do. You I know, mean. Metal Lark. Now, he passed, right? Yeah, he passed away a couple years ago. Couple I years thought so. Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys great are like legendary. Mm -hmm. Now, what role do you play? Did you play, of course, you're a dribbler, so were you more of a Curly Neal or a Metal Lark? I did a little of both. I thought you, know, you did. Yeah, yeah. I started off with Curly yeah. Neal, and I'm, I'm also one of the uh, current uh, 
uh, showman, so I, I, I feel that role yeah. as the person mic'd up also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's like, he's the centerpiece. That would make you the centerpiece then, right? Because yeah, everything yeah, comes I, through I, you, right? I, 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 I yeah. feel that role at times, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and really, it's just, you know, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to, yeah. to do what you've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. No question. Now, one of the things we talked about, some other players and all, but you have different, is it different teams that are part of Harmony? No, How do you yeah. call yourselves? I mean, because somebody may be playing over another country and you're playing here. Yeah, well, we're, 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 we're one team, but we have, team. we have so many games. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. We have over 250 games a year. So okay. we split into to units, so we're able to cover. Oh, units, okay. Yeah, we're able to cover the globe. So we'll play in Madison Square Garden and in Los Angeles the same night. Right. It, it allows the team the ability to be in Paris, France, and uh, okay. yeah. Atlanta, Georgia at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. you know? How uh, many current okay. mm -hmm. Harlem Globetrotters are there? About, uh, about 30 of them. About 30. Uh, okay. Enough to, 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 to do that. be <laughs> able to split and, 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 and mm. cover the globe if wow. needed. If needed. Wow. So a lot of people mistake, you know, if they don't really know, when they see all of the, you know, playing around and this and that, that you guys are really fantastic basketball players, first off. Yeah. That's the only way you can be a hard and road trotter. Yeah, so yeah. all that playing around stuff is for entertainment value, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know. Definitely had an opportunity to play with some amazing players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the best players, like you said, that ever played a game have been hard and globe trotters from mm -hmm. Wilt Chamberlain to Connie Hawkins to, to Magic Johnson played with the globe The Hawk was a globe trotter one and, time? Oh, yeah. And Magic yeah. Johnson yeah. was a globe trotter? Yeah, he donned the uniform uh, oh, before. Okay. So. Go ahead. <laughs> and I couldn't make the team. But anyhow, <laughs> but this is great stuff. So you do have a youth division. I know you reach out to kids in many different ways. What are some of the things we don't mm -hmm. know about what the Globe Charters, you know, do in terms of education and other things? They're giving back to the community. Well, I mean, I, I think it, that, that deals into, um, that goes into individual purpose. I mean, I think that we all, we're all passionate about, about um, the things we do. Um, yeah. For me, I have my, my foundation. Um, mm -hmm. HandlesFoundation.org, yeah, right. um, and, and I've been able to um, uh, parlay and, and, and use um, my quote-unquote um, status to to help try to do some great things mm -hmm. in the community. I've been able to renovate oh, yeah. uh, four basketball courts yeah. in the area, which Very has nice. been great. Mm -hmm. Trying to get kids back active and, mm -hmm. and um, playing basketball and, and, and living healthy, mm -hmm. um, and to watch those things come to fruition has been um, an amazing experience. Um, yeah. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, uh, just trying to do and be positive in the community. I think um, all uh, all of the players are, are passionate about their communities, yeah. their respective yeah. communities, and I'm mm -hmm. definitely passionate about mine. How do you stay so humble, man? Because if I was a globe charter, I'd be a mess. <laughs> I'll be like, here you he come again. Oh, my goodness. But you know, I've noticed that you you come to events, you just are there, you support a lot of events yes, you and most recently I saw you at the Martin Luther King Leadership Development Institute graduation mm -hmm. yeah and I was glad that they called your name and I said no wait a minute Chris is sitting back there <laughs> you know this is a Harlem Globetrotter and they did recognize you so I was glad that they did but uh but you just show up and just support you know well I mean I think uh, first life is about humility uh yeah. number mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. um so uh, and, and also it's about support I mean I don't think we do enough of supporting each other mm -hmm. yeah. so I try to not only um, attend as many events as I can, but I think it's important that you are tangible to the community. Right. So um, it, it's not enough to see you on television. Mm -hmm. if, if you, it's important to be out uh, so that kids can can you know shake your hand, talk to you, speak to you, mm -hmm. and realize that uh, they can achieve their mm -hmm. goals or dreams too. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's very important for me to be um, mm -hmm. accessible to the community. One thing I do want to make sure that our viewers know as well, Chris, is that before you became a Harlem Globetrotter, you had both a master's and a bachelor's and a master's degree. Is that correct? Yes. I have a bachelor's and master's degree in social work with a concentration in community organization. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm a, a big advocate of education. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, I speak to kids about a number of things. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and education and valuing your education mm -hmm. is one of those things. And where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Lock Haven University, also the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Hey, That's folks, right. I just, yeah. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, man. Great That's stuff. Yeah, thank man. you. So as you move forth, okay, in your career and all, is there some point that you have to retire? I don't know how that works, but how do you have to, like, at 50 you have to retire or sometimes? Well, well um, professional sports is competitive. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, 
very competitive. Every single year is, is tough for every single athlete. Right. Um, so, um, you know, one thing that is inevitable is that you will retire. You will retire. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it, 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 and it gets harder and tougher as you get older. Sure. But uh, um, I've been blessed enough to have uh, the organization invest in me. So I'm also um, in other parts. Um, I'm a scout. I'm an assistant coach. I'm All a, right. So I've, I'm able to do other things within the organization. Okay. Um, but again, I mean, uh, I think that you have to be able to diversify yourself um, and, and do other things mm -hmm. uh, because uh, retirement is inevitable. Okay. Um, um, but again, uh, for me, it's about um, trying to be in shape and, and, and play. As long as I love it, I, I'd like to continue. And mm -hmm. when I don't love it anymore, it's time to move on to the next thing. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And, and you're prepared to do so, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks. Well, very well prepared. Yeah, you, you always have to be prepared <laughs> uh, yeah. for, the, for the next mm -hmm. opportunity. Yeah. But isn't it the same, though, that one of the um, images we have of a lot of professional athletes is that they're not prepared and that they blow their money and all that kind of stuff. They did that thing called Broke on, what was it, HBO? And yeah. a lot of people like, yeah, see, but they, but they don't talk about guys like yourself who are prepared educationally and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. But they was, you know, prating around all these folks, and I thought, nah, but that's not the whole story, you know. Yeah. And that's part of the problem, but, you know. Yeah, um, it's not the whole story, mm -hmm. um, probably too much of the story. Yeah. Um, but I think nowadays it's, it's important to get these messages across mm -hmm. um, to youth so that they understand that, um, uh, that these things are, are possible and to um, be able to put these seeds of positivity in their mind at an early age mm -hmm. so that when they're going through different things, they're prepared. And not only athletics uh, mm -hmm. and um, athletes, but, but people coming up in general. Yeah. And whatever your exactly. respective right. career may be, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that you need to know about life. Yeah. that are going to help you be successful in the long run. That's right. That's right. That Absolutely. makes so much sense. Yeah. Now, are you called on a lot here in the uh, you know, Central PA, Harrisburg area, to go into schools and speak to young people? Yeah. Uh, well, to, to whom much is given, much is required. Yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I, um, I try to uh, uh, spread a message of positivity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to do as much speaking as possible. Right. Um, with my schedule, a lot of times it's tough. You know, we're mm -hmm. on the road six, seven months out of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but when I am home, I, I try to do a, a number of things. Um, All right. And so I'm always in the community. I'm always speaking. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I try to help out as much as possible. All right. Fantastic. So I just want to say again, to emphasize to the parents who are watching this program that your young people can get into the ultimate spin camp. Uh, you still have time, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. August fifth to the eighth, and um, yeah. uh, and our and you can register right online at um, handlesfoundation.org. Okay. Uh, is there age? Yeah, we go from six to whole way up to seventeen. Six okay. to seven. Six. six. Yeah. Well, we we have a younger division now. <laughs> okay. And, and for the younger kids, it's from nine to twelve thirty, mm -hmm. and then for uh, from nine to seventeen, they stay from mm -hmm. 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Oh, Fantastic. Okay. All right. You know, I don't know if you have uh, books that you can give away, but I do have a great connection and a gentleman by the name of Joe Bedard who just does fantastic work through the uh, Central Pennsylvania Literacy Council. So we'd love to make some books available to you young people. Wow. Uh, free of charge. Awesome. Bring them up. Yeah. Where's your camp being held this year? Susquehanna Township Middle School. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've had a great relationship with them, with them the last um, number of years and mm -hmm. it's, it's been a, a great partnership. Okay. At the middle school. That's up off of uh, Union Deposit. Just yeah, Union Deposit. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. So yeah, we'll make sure we get them up there. And what's the uh, the hours? So from what to what? Nine in the morning to four in the afternoon. Wow, full yeah. day. Okay, mm -hmm. good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. I know there's a cost, but the cost is relatively reasonable. I understand. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it, there is a cost. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, one twenty-five, mm -hmm. um, um, and then seventy bucks for the younger younger mm -hmm. kids. Uh, okay. And one thing I'm trying to do is, uh, now that I have a foundation, is, is trying to um, raise money where eventually we can have that cost eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it, it, we put a lot of money and time into the camp. So it, yeah. it's expensive to run the camp. Yes. Um, but uh, uh, it's been something that's been working for uh, 17 years. Or yes, still it long. has. And it is a fantastic experience mm -hmm. for your youth. And I, again, I've uh, been blessed to be, you know, involved at least once or twice to come up and see how it's done. And uh, folks, you can't miss on this. Young people learn so much. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there and you're a business person, a church, just an individual that has the kind of income that could support, please support mm -hmm. the uh, Ultimate Spin Camp with uh, Chris Handles Franklin. And uh, he can use your help and so could our young people. Keeping them off the streets, getting them involved, mm -hmm. educating them is a powerful thing that we can do and we can do it together. 
right? Yeah. So exactly. how can they get that? Uh, you know, if they wanted to make a donation, how do they make a donation to you? Um, well, you can go to um, Ultimate. I mean, uh, you can go to uh, handlesfoundation.org. Okay. And all all of the things that we do in the community, from our turkey giveaways uh, to our, um, we do a. a, a where we go to uh, bring clothes and, mm. and socks and uh, um, uh, toiletries to, to, to the uh, mission. We do that uh, okay. every year. We have a day of giving okay. uh, where we bring gifts to the women's shelter. Mm. Um, so we do a number of things through the foundation. Mm. Um, and, and all of that's right on, uh, right on uh, mm. online, handlesfoundation.org. Handlesfoundation.org. You know, make the donation. Uh, help the community, right? <laughs> Let's yeah. do that. Yes, indeed. So, you know, <laughs> That's one way we can help. What else can we do as a community mm -hmm. to support a foundation yeah. like yours? Well, uh, you know, this year I'm having my my signature, my first event, uh, sorry, my signature event. Mm -hmm. As you know, with a foundation, money goes out, and it's, it's, it's hard to, it, the, the goal is to keep it sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, and this year I'm excited to have something that we call the Taste of Harrisburg, mm -hmm. where it's a number of restaurants in the area will serve their signature dishes. Mm -hmm. um, um, a lot of uh, my celebrity friends from all over the globe coming here to Harrisburg. It's at WITF, the oh, WITF right. building. Beautiful mm -hmm. building. Um, yeah, very beautiful yeah. building. Um, and it, it's a, a celebrity gala wow. and a red carpet event where you can dress up, get okay. nice, okay. And, and have a great time. So right. we're real excited about that. That's August 23rd. And um, mm -hmm. you can also get those tickets on, um, on uh, handlesfoundation.org. Okay. Wow. So that's a Friday night? Friday night. Yeah. All right. That sounds yeah. very exciting. We might yeah. have to talk about that. Yeah, we got to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about it. Let me tell I'm my workshop about people about right now, and I won't be there, so I'm going to <laughs> Handles. <laughs> that, no, that sounds real nice. It yeah. sounds real good. We got to support that. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things, you know, being able to travel the world and travel mm -hmm. the globe and be in all these places, mm -hmm. I see some amazing things, but uh, you, you always want to bring those things back to your city. So. Yeah. This is one of those attempts, mm -hmm. and I'm looking to, um, to do something real positive. Mm -hmm. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, give us some uh, idea of some of the uh, most uh, interesting places you guys have played a basketball game, the Harlem Globetrotters. Because I've seen some things on TV, like on ships and yeah. different things like that. Yeah, well, you know, as an organization, we played in bull rings on top of uh, oh, right. arena rules. We played on top of the old Spectrum building. Um, what? Yeah, we've, we played some very odd and unique places. Yeah. Um, I've had the opportunity to play um, on an ice skating rink. Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> I, I, I've entertained the troops um, in Iraq during the war. Oh, wow. That was uh, that was a little yeah. scary. That could have uh, yeah. um, but, but gratifying. And, mm -hmm. and you learn to have an appreciation of what, of, our, of what our troops do for us. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like I said, I've been to 84 countries. I, I've been to some places that you can't go to anymore. Oh, um, wow. Syria, Iraq, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, some of these places that that we play that are no longer standing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Mm. So basketball is taking me all over the globe. You know, mm -hmm. But it's, it's definitely been a great place. A well, great let me thing. ask you about that. You said you've been all over the globe mm -hmm. in regard to. What about language? Are you able to at least mm -hmm. learn some of the uh, languages of some of these other countries? That's yeah, I mean, I think one thing um, you learn to have appreciation is different yeah. cultures and right. different people. Mm -hmm. The importance of diversity. Um, so when we go into these countries, uh, we're not just showing up doing these shows we're, we're trying to do the entire show yeah. in their language yeah. um, a, a, or as much as we can mm -hmm. and you know this past tour we went to 10 countries 10 different languages right. when we're in Spanish I'm saying estamos contentos de estar aquí uh -huh. in Paris yeah, so right. I'm <laughs> speaking Spanish uh, well that I said in Paris yeah, yeah. but in Paris it would be French but yeah. that was Spanish yeah, yeah. Right. so in Spain we'll speak Spanish uh, mm -hmm. if we're in China you know e ah sun su wu li Chi bao jo, uh, ni hao. You, you know, you learn to say the things that you would say in a show in English. Uh -huh. You learn to say it in your All language. Right. So it gets tough when you get to places like Poland and mm -hmm. Serbia. Uh, uh -huh. But you try to do your best to okay. uh, appreciate their culture. Sure, uh, sure. And it, it's, it's been a great, great experience. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the presence of the Globetrotters being so, uh, such great ambassadors, right? has helped the uh, NBA in terms of their global outreach, because I noticed they're doing a lot more in terms of going into Africa and other places. In fact, 
the recent draft showed that boy, they drafted a number of people from yeah. other countries. You know. Well, uh, I think the globe. I think it's directly attributed to the Harlem Globetrotters. Mm -hmm. right. Again, we've been going out of the country since 1950, yeah. the first organization to do it, mm -hmm. um, and made basketball popular all yeah, over these, all over the world. All over the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, because of that, basketball is we have such a global presence mm -hmm. that yeah. at one time we were partnered with the NBA because okay. of that global presence. Yeah. Um, but a lot of those players coming into the league, um, their first experience, like my own, their mm -hmm. first experience with basketball was with watching the Harlem Globetrotters. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's great to be an introduction to so many kids mm -hmm. um, um, and their first experience being that. This is off a little bit, but what's your take on the recent NBA, not just the draft, but all of the trades and movement, man? I think, has this, is this unprecedented? It seems like there's a lot more movement than there's ever been before yeah. in the NBA. Well, I mean, yeah. I, well, first I think the times are different. Okay. Uh, you know, I think with the institutions of AAUs and people going from place to place, it's, mm -hmm. the sport has become a lot more individualized. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So you see these movements and these power teams. Mm -hmm. um, I think this year will be interesting. I, I, I think uh, I, I'm excited to see it. And yeah. I, I think that it was, there, were, there was one or two powerhouses now. We mm -hmm. have several. Several. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in interested to see. Uh, I know I'm going to get in uh, trouble really. by saying this. I was glad to see the Warriors lose because it was so automatic. <laughs> and it's like, you know, that's not good for the sport. If you just know, you can just mail it in, oh, man, the Warriors are going to win. But I thought it made it exciting that they actually had a real finals and yeah. they really didn't win it, you know. Yeah, I, I have mixed feelings. <laughs> yeah, um, mixed feelings. <laughs> well, I, I actually, you know, you, you get tired of seeing the same team you win. Yeah. But I know how great a person Steph Curry is. Oh, um, yeah, you know, yeah. I've had opportunity to meet a number of people. And, okay. and I watch him um, in particular, not only how kind he and cordial he was to me, but mm. to the fans. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. that, that – usually touches my I will heart. tell you, I picked up on that as well. And yeah. his wife both are doing great things, I see, and everything, you know. So, Well, I know we've run down to just a couple minutes here. Mm -hmm. uh, so how, if people wanted to get in touch with you, have you come in as a speaker, you know, get to your camp, what's, what's the way to do it again? Um, probably the easiest way is handlesfoundation.org. Okay. Um, all of the information, you can contact me through that same website. And, um, and, and it has a lot of things that we're doing. And we have two great things coming up, the Ultimate Spin Camp, but also the gala. Yes, our uh, Taste of Harrisburg Celebrity Gala. Okay, yes. and the date again is? August 23rd. August 23rd, coming up very soon. You know, we say that, like, but that'll be right, right up yeah, close, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to get yeah. tickets, and I'd imagine that plate, that's going to be big, you know. So they probably need to get tickets soon, right? Yeah, and, uh, and, and I'm hoping that people can come out and support. Yeah. And, and the, it goes for very worthy causes, all the things that you do in community, which is a lot. So, again, <laughs> thank man, you. thank you it so much for what you do. Thing. Yeah, thank you so Likewise, much. Likewise, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate you. For Appreciate years, you. you've been... You've both been doing so many amazing things in our community, and it, it doesn't go unnoticed or unappreciated. I appreciate that. Well, I know that you guys are looking for a senior division of the Globe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there, man. I'm still waiting. <laughs> But I hope that you'll continue to support the Harlem Globetrotters, especially our homegrown uh, brother here, brother Chris Handles Franklin, man, doing the great stuff. 13 years, I'm still amazed by that. But uh, he's just doing great things. He's opened up doors for others in the community, and he's always supporting. So whatever we can do, let's do it. It makes the community mm -hmm. better, makes us a better people, and it just helps so many of the young folks who are so desperately in need of our help. Thank